Our confidence is one of the biggest attributes attacked by narcissistic abusers. They want to destroy our ability to perform and lose our sense of identity and follow them. Our confidence in who we are is a threat to a narcissist, so they must come full force at it. While we are being targeted, we may have felt emotionally deflated, robbed, not at peace, confused, stressed, anxious, alone, afraid, terrified, and isolated, to name a few. It's a scary time and may still be. When we go through this deflationary time, we can take the attacks on our relationship personally. We may take it to heart and carry the burden internally. We may feel responsible for the things that are not our fault, which take a heavy toll on our confidence, abilities, our mindset, and even our health. Today, let's talk a little bit about what confidence is, and it may not be what you think, and ways to rebuild it after enduring narcissistic abuse. So let's talk about confidence. What does it look like after narcissistic abuse? Today, I've got four tips to boost and rebuild your confidence after narcissistic abuse. When I used to think of confidence, I had a picture of a man or woman who was the leader in a room. He or she was directing individuals and keeping things in order. They had what I viewed as confidence because they spoke loudly and gave direction to others and the others followed willingly or not. This portrays the person, the image that they had it all together, that they can move a room and people follow. And this was the ultimate goal, or so I thought. I thought this exemplified confidence and this image was the role model to obtain. Is this true confidence? What do you think? Or is confidence displayed when a bunch of gals go out for the night? Is the loud one the most confident? Does volume have anything to do with confidence? Does society teach that confidence is exemplified by being loud? Let me assure you, this image of success or confidence may just be a farce. I no longer see things this way. Inner confidence and even quietness of strength is the confidence I live and breathe now. It's to a whole new tune, a new tune of freedom and refreshment. During narcissistic abuse, we are taught to conform, to give up our identity and release who we were meant to be to take on this, quote, slavery, covertly, of course. Confidence to me now is the quiet internal ability to set out and not only do the very things I want and desire to do, but believe in myself enough to set out to try to accomplish them. It boils down to me is me believing in my ability to move forward. It's my own belief and it's dictated by a different set of standards, if you will. I'm not saying that in these scenarios that these people are not confident or confident leaders. They very well may be, but it's the image that was my model of it that is no more. I have a new model of confidence. So how do we rebuild our confidence? First, after narcissistic abuse, no contact. We discussed this in another video. I will link to it above on steps to go after going no contact with the narcissistic emotional abuser. I'll leave a link to it below. But after I was coming straight off the plane, if you will, from narcissistic abuse, I was near sighted. My vision and belief system for what I could do was being affected by my circumstances. My confidence was low at this point and I had some doubt toward my abilities. At the same time, I had a deep feeling and knowledge that I was going to make it. I was going to be able to escape, that I will recover, and that I will change my life. 
Wow. Overcoming narcissistic abuse and recovering from it has changed my life up to this present day. And while I have more to learn and believe I will always want to learn more to improve myself and to detect and heal, the one thing that has helped me most was drawing a line in the sand. It was a non-option for me. I had to move forward. I saw the true colors exposed and I had to say no more. No more. No contact is the first step in rebuilding confidence after narcissistic abuse. I believe also that the longer we are away from narcissistic abusers, we can begin to heal and heal exponentially. When we are still exposed to it, it does damage. It affects the heart. It affects the soul, the mind. I equate it to a frog boiling in water. Let the frog out of the water and let it heal. Where are you in your journey, right? Are you the frog that's in the boiling water? Do you need to jump out? Second is to get rid of the naysayers. In order to boost our confidence after narcissistic abuse, find out who are your naysayers. These are the people who are not on your side. These are those who are not for you. They don't encourage you. I have a feeling you know exactly who these people are. The naysayers steal your joy, your peace, and tell you you cannot do things. They're toxic people, and you need to call the exterminator. Friend, it's time to let these people go. You know who they are. You may think, will I be lonely? You might be. Well, who do I do fun things around town? other people, or you may just decide to do them by yourself and go off on a whole new adventure and a whole new set of learning experiences. It might just be fun, but cutting the ties may be painful. And while you are healing your soul and starting your life out without the dead weight of people's expectations and learning to live for you for once, maybe ever, it's time, right? The time is now, and I'm excited for you. I cannot wait to hear your stories. Third, what do you like to do naturally? Do you like to organize? Do you like to write? Do you like to run? What breathes life into you? What refreshes your spirit? What do you wish you could do all day? Perhaps you have several hobbies. Spend time on your hobbies because they may help to build your confidence in your skills and help your mind to recover. Another thing to note, coming from narcissistic abuse, even our hobbies were not sacred and were abused. For example, I used to be a runner or a jogger, fast walker. I did some 5Ks around my town and one 10K, which I was immensely proud of. I did it in my best time ever. But what I was told by my abuser in regard to me running was, why would you want to? Over and over again, this played in my head. And today, I still struggle with getting back into running. Your abuser will try to take and destroy the very things that bring you life because they compete with it for your attention. So embrace your old and new hobbies and interests. Be ready to pick up something new and try that out, knowing that your confidence and skills are being rebuilt to move forward. Be willing to try new things and explore what else you may enjoy. One phrase that has helped me to learn new things and to have a good mindset is that a brain surgeon didn't come out of the womb knowing how to perform surgery, right? They were taught and the knowledge expanded over time with experience. They learned one day at a time, then mastered the skill. So my philosophy is to learn one day at a time and to keep on learning new things. Some things will be more challenging than others, and that's okay, and by design. In fact, when I have accomplished a new task that was challenging, I feel great, right? Endorphins run through the body, and I am so proud of myself. When I think if I could accomplish this one thing, then what else can I do? I'd love to hear from you. What would you like to accomplish? Jot it in the comments below. Fourth, make a list of your goals and create a vision for your future. Making a list of goals 
and desires is something I'm passionate about. Perhaps it's due to my strong desire to accomplish, but for whatever reason, I love lists, I love schedules, vision writing, goal setting, and even more so achieving them with a great sense of satisfaction. Our confidence increases when we move forward with our plan. The more I hold myself to the goals I have set, the more I see a new life that I envision for myself coming together. Anticipate setbacks and hard times and even changes in our goals. When things happen, we can make updates as we go along. Now, this is our life, right? We are in charge and we now call the shots and make the decisions. After narcissistic abuse, our confidence was impaired. Our mind was on overload and we were not able to function at peak performance due to the malicious mind games. The hope is that our confidence can be rebuilt and we can embrace a new future and a new pathway going forward. For one, we will need to say goodbye to the abusers. Going no contact sets a line in the sand and creates a barrier of protection around you. Once no contact is instituted and the longer we are no contact, we can start to recover and restabilize our thoughts. Next, spending time on life-giving activities will boost our brain power and encourage our soul. We will rebuild our confidence with our hobbies one step at a time since it's typically something we are drawn to naturally and enjoy doing. The more time we are in a refreshed state, the better we will perform both mentally and physically, which is essential as we are rebuilding from narcissistic abuse. Last but not least, It's the ideology of goal setting and planning our future on a written board so we can see it as it will visually help us to propel us to the next level. We are now in charge of our destiny, our future, and we can make plans to see things come to fruition. Learning to rebuild our confidence will take time. Making steps gradually in the right direction and owning our future forward will put us on the right path. I'd love to hear your stories about rebuilding your confidence after narcissistic abuse. What is something new you learned about yourself? What new goals have you set? What new hobbies have you started? Drop us a note in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.